say something very clearly, and I'll give you a little bit of background. I'm not an attorney, this is not legal advice, but I do have a background in political science, was what I studied. When I did my master's degree, I worked for the Department of the Navy. I've worked for the federal government. I know all about their shenanigans, all right? I worked for the state of California. When I worked for the University of California, Irvine, I was the director of education doing all the K-12 professional development for teachers. I ran the English language learning programs. I know exactly all the shenanigans in the K-12 schools. And I will tell you very clearly, as an educator at, the higher, at higher ed for 30 years, take your kids out of school. Today, today, I have this red flyer over at the table with my wonderful friends over at Reopen San Diego, and it gives you free content on freedom learning. This is the only way that we have, in my view, to work forward for our future. Even if you don't have children, especially if you don't have children, you could become a freedom learning specialist teaching other people's kids when they're going to work all day. It's sad to say that a lot of parents put their kids in school because they're babysitters and they go to work and they want the kids out of the hair or they feel like, I don't know what to teach them, I don't like homeschooling. This is not homeschooling. It's exactly not homeschooling. It's called freedom learning and I've got hours of content for you to dive in. Take this information for free and you can have a, a grandparent, a neighbor, a retired friend. You can swap with another parent. We give you every remedy possible. Now, when all of this hogwash started over a year and a half ago, and I felt like I was alone in the world, did any of you feel like that? Like, who else? Oh my gosh, nobody gets it but me. I'm in the land of the zombies. The first place I went to was YouTube, because I knew there would be some truthers on YouTube that I could connect with, and sure enough, they were speaking the truth, but you know what happened? They, they just got me all um, twisted in the spin cycle, and I felt horrible after watching it, like the, like the world was going to end. And uh, the UN was going to come knocking on my door, and you know, the, all of the, and I'm not saying that, sorry, I don't know, I'm not saying that couldn't happen. Uh, but you know, that there would be, I kept seeing all the videos of all the train cars of military stuff, and I felt horrible. I couldn't sleep, and I was just having anxiety, and I thought, you know what? They're not giving me any solutions. All they're doing, me, doing is throwing me in the spin cycle, and uh, even some getting on stage and, you know, working you up into a lather, and then you're like, okay, bye, have a good day. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? That's what I do at The Healthy American. Every single thing is remedies and resources for you to fight tyranny, tools against tyranny. Yes, I have my rants. Oh, boy, yes, I have my rants. I sure do. I have all sorts of rants that you can enjoy. Uh, but I tell you what, it's natural and healthy to have those emotions, and you should release those emotions appropriately. Um, but what, what I decided was, even though these people were speaking the truth and they were breaking news and all of that, I didn't want to feel that dread. So my goal is to bring positivity and possibility to your daily life so that when you go on The Healthy American, how many of you watch The Healthy American on YouTube? Yeah, good job, I love it, you guys. Go to thehealthyamerican.org. I've got so many resources. I probably have a thousand videos. I have thousands of hours of research that I've spent, you know, my poor husband, he's like, can you come to bed? It's like two o'clock in the morning. But I can't, I'm relentless. I will never stop, I always dig deeper. Last year, we spoke at the Board of Supervisors and we had them reverse their mask mandate. How about that? Action, positive action. I call it positive ways of change. Yes, we were ranting, but we did get it done. And what happened is we actually were uh, demanding that they end the local health emergency. All right, class is in session. Teacher Peggy's gonna explain something very simple. There is no state of emergency, all right? There never was. There are no grounds for it. We had an attorney friend here. If he goes to court, he has to provide evidence. You can't just go into a, a judge and say, well, I think this is how it happened, and I, I, my opinion is that it shouldn't be this way. That doesn't hold any water. You have to have proof. You have to have evidence. So there's a law in California called the California Emergency Services Act. Did anybody ever, I don't think they've been cracking down as bad as they have in um, Northern California, which is basically gone. I mean, I people are just leaving in droves. Uh, LA is just worse than a third world. I mean, it is just not good at all. And they have been giving people tickets for just walking outside of their car without a mask on. And when you look to see what that ticket is, they give this code. Like if you actually have a ticket, you run a red light, they give you a, a ticket and there's a penal code. Penal code means your penalty. It says the law that you broke and how much you have to pay. It's very simple, it's a law. This California Emergency Services Act only applies to the governor. Is the governor here? 
I call him the... I, boy, I'm never gonna move again. I am not moving. The, uh, I call him the Gaviner. <laughs> so the Gaviner is not here, and guess what? Those laws only apply to him. You could not possibly violate that law because you're not the governor. These are laws that apply to what he can do. If you're not the governor, you can't violate it. And the other thing that they would do, somebody emailed me uh, and showed me their ticket in Berkeley. She said, can you help me figure this out? I got a ticket for not wearing a mask and I did my research and I found it out. Do you know what that ticket was for? A parking meter. Because there is no law for you to wear a mask, all right? There is no law, there never can be. And you're not violating anything by breathing oxygen. Okay, but you know what I posted? Right next to that sign that said masks required, get this. You must remove your hat, sunglasses, and hoodie for our safety. But please conceal your identity. Just no sunglasses. So I went in with my sunglasses on just for fun. No mask, but sunglasses. Uh, so there is no law. There never can be a law. There is no law for these needles, as I call them. I have to always be careful about the language because I know many of you have also been censored. So there is no law for you to be tested. There is no law for you to wear the scam. There is no law, never can be, for you to be vaccinated. Well, Peggy, what about Jacobson versus Massachusetts in 1918? First of all, we're in 2021. You're going to go by some Supreme Court ruling of 1918? Secondly, Supreme Court rulings don't make law, all right? That can go before another court. The only thing that makes law is the legislative branch of government. Are, are, you, are you clear with me? This is my, my most fun part every time I speak. We're going to do a little um, repeat after me. So I'm going to say it, and would you repeat it so everybody will hear it? No governor can make a law. No governor can make a law. No mayor of San Diego can make a law. No mayor of San Diego can make a law. No health officer can make a law. No health officer can make a law. To me, with all of these harms that they've perpetrated upon us, I think the most egregious, the most harmful, the most heinous, the most unthinkable, unethical, immoral, is that they are brainwashing everybody to believe that one person can tell them what to do. Because what they'll do next is they're gonna fill in the blank. And they're gonna say, you have to take your pants off before you go in. You <laughs> say, why? Well, because you might have germs, you might have germs on them. And as Alondra was giving those examples, it came to mind in school, what if they said to your daughter, she has to have a hysterectomy? because, you know, then she wouldn't be spreading any diseases or, or adding to the overpopulation. That's what's coming next, folks. There are too many of you, and you better do something about it. And we'll start with not having kids. Yeah, we tried to sterilize them through the needle, but uh, let's just go right to it and have hysterectomies for all. And you get a donut. <laughs> right? Yeah, I did a little digging on that donut. Do you know who owns... Uh, Krispy Kreme? No. It's on my private platform at PeggyHall.tv. A, a company called Jab, J-A-B. Yeah. Owned by a German. Yeah, I I'd look into that German history. See, I think the evildoers are trying to silence me. I'd look into that German history a little closer if I were you. Yes, a company called Jab owns Krispy, Krispy Kreme. Why in the world would it be Krispy Kreme and not Dunkin' Donuts that was given away the free donut? At least this was in Orange County. Maybe, I, maybe it wasn't here in San Diego. I dig deep on all of this. I got all this frenzy of emails from people yesterday. Go to the Orange County Department of Education. There's a secret meeting with the health officer. They were going to require every school to make the vaccines mandatory. So what did I do? I picked up the phone and I called the Orange County Department of Education. They said, there's no meeting. So I don't know if these are infiltrators that are spreading this false information. Please, friends, don't spin into the spin cycle. You dig deeper. You pick up the phone and you say, is there a meeting? This was an unsigned message. Who did the message come from? Well, I don't know, I saw it on next door. And you're gonna, you're gonna forward it to 100 of your friends and you don't even know who wrote it? This is the spin cycle. Get out in the fresh air. Imagine yourself on the laundry line. All the fresh air out of the spin cycle. And whenever you start to feel that, you go to The Healthy American on YouTube and watch an uplifting video that will give you actual remedies. I want to talk about some of those remedies. We know that no one person can make a law. The CDC cannot make a law. The DOJ cannot make a law. Thank you to all of those that emailed me that. 
little ditty as well, and I replied with a video showing that the DOJ is not the legislature. The DOJ is in the executive branch of government. So the president cannot make a law. No president can ever mandate vaccines. Now you'll say, well, Peggy, I work for the federal government. That's where we have some remedies. Your remedies are going to be to get an exemption. Now, some of you, rightly so, and I agree with you. I, it's my right, I don't have to do it. You are absolutely right. That lawsuit that was with the Texas, how many of you guys remember that in Texas? that Methodist hospital where all those nurses got fired and then the headlines say, hospital can mandate vaccines. How many of you here are in the healthcare? Let's give a round of applause, right? Let's. And you're here. You were last year's heroes and now they wanna, uh, they wanna uh, take away your profession. Listen, headlines like that are damaging. That lawsuit, which I analyzed in a video, was, and we can ask our attorney friend, it was argued under the wrong cause. Further, those individuals did not seek exemptions. They showed up and said, you can't make me. Well, it's true, but why do that when there's an escape hatch for you already, right? Are you gonna stand there in the flames and say, you're not coming any closer, I defy you flames from burning my home, when it's like, well, maybe you can leave the door and put the fire hose on it instead. So there are remedies for you. You can get a medical exemption, you can get a religious exemption. Let me speak for a moment about a medical exemption. Does anyone have one? Did anyone ever get a medical exemption for a mask, for a, a test, for a vaccine? A few years ago, I had a completely detached retina and I was blind in my eye, which is why I have the sunglasses on, I have some light sensitivity. The vision has pretty much come back with several surgeries and I needed to get a medical exemption at work. I was working at the community college just for the record, I'm still on staff at the community college for those who thought that they got me fired, uh, but they have not given me any assignments in the last year and a half. The president is, is um, oh, he probably wants to be the governor because he just follows him, you know, right every step he takes, he's one step ahead of it. Last year when they told us to stay home, it was our spring break, and he said, well, instead of one week, we're gonna ask you to stay home for two weeks. Well, you know what? Just stay home for the rest of, some, of the semester. But you know what? We're actually not going to come back in the summer, and, and not in the fall either. We decided you're not going to come back in spring of 2021 either. Oh, he, he had a magic uh, ball, or what is that called? A crystal ball, right? Last March, he knew that this was going to go on until spring 2021. So I taught one semester on Zoom, and when I gave a timeout to the students and I ran to the kitchen to start crying, <laughs> it was so horrible, and these were adults. It's not a way of learning, and I will not take an assignment uh, from them, from then. But I was teaching at the community college. They wanted me to get a tuberculosis test. And I'm like, well, what about all the students? Are they gonna get one too, or am I the only one that's contagious? You get it? There's only one of me and there's 50 of them. Why do I have to get the test? There's that inequality again. And I said, well, I don't have it, and I certainly don't want tuberculosis injected into my arm, which is how they test you for it. Gee, isn't that weird? Let's inject you with tuberculosis and then see if your test comes back with tuberculosis. Uh, no. The other interesting little tidbit about that is I called the Orange County Health Department. Again, this is years ago. And I said, um, where do I get this tuberculosis screening? They said, well, you don't have to get the test, but we're going to do a screening. We're going to ask you some questions. And if you don't have tuberculosis, we'll give you the, the uh, you know, clearance. So I called the health department and I said, can I come in and get this, you know, the county's requiring it and you're the county. and." Where do I get this health screening? Oh, no, 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 no. The county only serves the indigent people that your tax dollars are paying for. I don't know if anybody followed what I just said. I couldn't get served, but the other people could. The ones that weren't paying taxes could go get the testing from the county. Okay, just bringing a few more points to your awareness here even though I was the one paying the taxes for them to do it. So I went to my own doctor and paid the doctor, and they looked at me and said, have you been to a country with tuberculosis? No, you look healthy. What's it? And I got the screening. Listen, this is so important because each of you that are required to be tested, you say, I don't want the test, I will take the screening. Would you repeat after me? Screening, 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 screening. screening. There is no lawful authority for anyone to violate your body that test is a violation of your body. 
And if you say, well, Peggy, they're, they're making I didn't move. They say, Peggy, they're making me do it if I don't get a vaccine. You use the religious exemption against the test. The test, the mask, and the vaccine are all antithetical. They are all against the Christian doctrinal beliefs. And, they, and you don't have to be a Christian to get a religious exemption. The law states that your own ethically, uh, your own ethical and moral sincerely held, that's the key word in the law, sincerely held relig uh, beliefs are enough, should be enough by the letter of the law for you to get this exemption. I will tell you that the, the three ways that people make a mistake and don't get their exemptions. And they'll say, well, Peggy, I tried it, it didn't work. Well, number one, they're going for the religious or sincerely held belief and they bring in all the science. They say this doesn't exist, the PCR tests are invalid, uh, people aren't dying, it's a 99% recovery. Well, that's all true, 100% true. That has nothing to do with your religious beliefs. So they will not approve it based on that. So that's the number one tip, is you just don't bring any in any of that. Number two, it has to be a belief that actually is all encompassing regarding your way of life. They gave an example, the EEOC gave an example of a religious exemption that wasn't approved. This is long before all of this hogwash. And the example was that a woman had tattoos and the employer said, you need to cover up your tattoos at work. And she said, no, it's my religious belief to have these tattoos. And they said, well, why exactly is it your religious belief to show your tattoos? And she said, because this, um, this musician right here, he's like my God and I worship him. <laughs> and I like to go to his concerts. But she could not prove that that musician's doctrine and worldview had you know, directed all of her choices in life. So it was not approved and she had to cover up the vaccines. But there's another example that you may know very well at Disneyland, they did not want the Muslim to wear a scarf over her face because it was not part of the costume character. And this was a few years ago. I live, you know, I'm Orange County, grew up not far from there. And uh, she won that lawsuit because they said it is her religious belief and the, your religious beliefs are enshrined in the Constitution. Now be clear on this, the Constitution does not give you rights. I know we use that phrase, my constitutional rights. Let's change that to my God-given rights, shall we? All right. Let's change that to my God-given rights that are protected by the Constitution. And that's what I want you to understand. Now, your religious beliefs are in the First Amendment of the Constitution, and they're in the, they are in the California Constitution. And I'll tell you what, the state of California, oh man, you know how they love all those laws, like the law, it's like, oh, 1,000 new laws were passed in this legislative session. A reminder, laws are only made by your state legislative body, which is, we call it the assembly and the Senate. And you have a state assembly person in your district and you have a senator from your district. And we have a wonderful senator from San Diego, right? We've got a Republican. If you guys don't know that, you need to know who your representatives are, all right? And they serve in our state government. This California law, I want you to write this down, 12926Q, make a little note in your phone. Most important law you need to know if you live in California and you do not want to do a self-suffocation device, you don't want to stick something up your nose that probably is the vaccine, and you certainly don't want to be injected with an untested, unknown biological material. 12926Q. I feel like I'm reading off a raffle ticket. Do we have any winners? Yay! all are going to be winners now. 12926Q. Do you know what that law says? It defines what it means to have a religious creed, your religious belief, your religious practice. Do you know what the words are in that? It's one paragraph long. I hope you're going to read it. I have it on the website. I have so much on the website that that is, can be your new, um, you don't need to go to the university. Just go to thehealthyamerican.org. I've got all of that there for you. This law says that you have the right to practice your religious beliefs, including what you wear, including what you wear. So if I was a member of the Sikh faith, I would have a turban on. No, even if the mayor of San Diego says you have to take your turban off to get into the store, that's illegal. 
That would be like telling the Muslim that they can only order a ham sandwich. It's not possible. It's, a, it's not even that they, that they won't do it, they can't do it. I cannot cover my face. I am made in the image of God. I don't need a Bible verse to tell me because God himself told me not to do it. But there is a Bible verse. All right, getting some love there. And uh, that is 2 Corinthians 3.18 says that you are supposed to stand before God with your face unveiled. And by doing so, you increase your glory in him. That is my God put me here to fight evil. I will do whatever it takes, including putting every single thing at risk. I'm on the record to say I will be starving, homeless, on the street before I comply with one ounce of any of this. Now that's my choice. I love you! There is, there is zero judgment for anyone who has complied in any manner. That was your choice. You may have done so out of fear, maybe out of ignorance, you didn't know. Maybe you thought, well, I had to do it and you didn't try, at least try. So one of the tips is you just walk into a store and then walk back out. And like, oh my God, they didn't kill me. I walked back out. <laughs> and then you walk in and you walk down one aisle and you're like, oh, nobody's throwing tomatoes at me. And then the next time you go and you buy a pack of gum and you quick and you buy it and you're like, at the shell self check, I'm not. They don't really care. How many hundreds, thousands of emails do I get from people saying, I, I took the mask off and people don't even care. I'm like, yeah, you have to try it. Yeah. But I will get back to that law because the law is really important. No judgment on any of you that have had to do that. I am fighting for you. I am fighting even for those that are telling people to take the vaccine. Because I'm fighting for freedom. And as Alondra said so eloquently, it is all about freedom of choice. So this law that I want to tell you about, 12926Q, it says that your religious garb, your religious clothing, it might include something you put on your head, it might even in include something you carry. I've researched this thoroughly. Members of the Sikh faith carry a knife. It's a, it's a dull knife and they keep it hidden in their clothes. And that's, it's their sword against evil. And they have the right to carry that. And if they were stopped by a police officer for some reason or another and they saw that, they could not get a citation for it because it is part of their religious practice. They are protected. Do you know what words are used in that law, 12926Q, that you have the right to do or not to do? Are you ready for it? Face covering. Thank God. Yes. You are protected from having to cover your face, and you are protected if you want to cover your face. So if I, I gave my bank story, I could have walked in with a veil on. They cannot make me take it off. So the reason I'm telling you all of this is for you to understand that you have God-given rights that may not be taken from you, and there are laws that protect you, and God gave me the gift of digging. I am relentless. I'm a bulldog, and I do never stop, and I've got a couple of flyers here. Uh, if they're all gone, you can snap a photo, and I have the other laws in California. Shall I read them? They're going to be very interesting to you. California Civil Code 51, civil law, yes, you know, like the Civil Rights Act of 1964 in this country, prior to that, people with a different skin color had to have different drinking fountains, different schools, they couldn't go to certain places. Doesn't that sound familiar? You think we're rolling back the clock here? Several decades, it's atrocious. And the ones that are rolling back the clock are the very ones that want to give the reparations to the, um, you know, I, that's a whole other topic, but I'm just saying, the ones that want to roll black, back roll back the clock um, are, are the very ones that um, they're, are trying to enslave us in the modern day. I'll just put it that way. California Civil Code 51, I quote, all individuals in the jurisdiction of California are free and equal. Repeat that please, free and equal. Free and equal. Free and equal. I'm gonna just make a t-shirt with California Civil Code 51 on it. You walk in, you just point to it. Let's take a look at Pastor David's t-shirt. It says, fully immunized, just like God made me. <laughs> fully immunized. Anybody has a question for me? Did you get the vaccine? I am fully immunized by the Holy Spirit. Yes. 
All individuals in this jurisdiction are free and equal. Listen to this. Regardless of medical condition or religion, they cannot, they have painted themselves into a corner. The only reason they've gotten away with this so far is because people, as Alondra said, were mesmerized and, and uh, hoodwinked and um, bamboozled by the media. Let's make everybody stay at home, lock in their homes, and give them the news 24 hours a day. Junk food, no exercise, no sunshine. Look at that, face cover required. That is a lie. I have a letter on my website for the transportation agency. Listen, we got down those highway signs that said, wash your hands, stay home, remember that? they want you to wash your hands and stay six feet away. You gotta move, you're sitting too close to <laughs> Later, just recently, like in January, February, they had those signs, did you see them? Go to your app to make your appointment to get your vaccination. Man, we hopped on that so quickly and thanks to all of you, and I wanna really thank Vivian because she worked on this as well. We sent those letters and you have to be relentless. They're gonna, first of all, you don't send it to the customer service. You send it to an actual human. Are there any? in the transportation department, I don't know. And uh, what do you do? You use the law. And you say the law says that these highway signs can only be used for traffic hazards. What an idea. They cannot be used for advertisements. It's illegal. Could you imagine? It would be, I would love to see an advertisement for the village when you're going down the 805 or the 5, right? Wouldn't that be awesome? But, it's, but it can't be because that's against the law. And if there's no traffic hazard, they have to remain dark. They cannot be telling you, the third thing is they cannot tell you information that's obvious. So we're a year and a half into this and you don't think people know to wash their hands? I, I did not change any of my hygiene habits, I'll just put it that way. I must have hugged over 100,000 people this year in all of the events I've been to. You guys are just awesome, I'm so glad that you're here. We did Thanksgiving with about this number of people in Orange County. You've got to see the video. I have a voiceover reading from the governor's, uh, you know, points about you can only have two people and you have to have your mask on between bites. You've got to see that video. I must have hugged over 100,000 people this year. I've never even had a sniffle. Being together is what makes us healthy. We need to treat those germs. you guys and I will get back. I know I'm jumping around a little but I can remember where I was because I also want to tell you about how to get these exemptions, the mistakes people make. But Civil Code 51, it says you have the right, you are free and equal. Somebody who got vaccinated is not better than you are, they're not healthier than you are, they're not smarter than you are, they're certainly not smarter than you are. The law says your medical condition, my medical condition is a pure body untouched by scientific experiments. So they cannot, it is illegal. Now these are the laws and we'll have some remedies on how to do it. It also says based on your religion, they cannot keep out the Sikh, they cannot keep out Jewish people, they cannot keep out Christians. I feel like walking into Costco holding a Bible. And then when they tell me to leave, I'll just say you're discriminating against me based on my religion. <laughs> You know, I mean, we got to use these tools that are available to us. Yeah, anybody that, you know, if you ha are like one of these protected classes, I would go in there and say, you're discriminating against me based on this. That's what the law says. Now, it says that we are entitled to the full and equal, equal, not separated. You are entitled to the full. You know, that's not getting served on the street corner, son. That's you go inside. And I have something, I have a little bonus surprise. This is just, this is gonna knock your socks off. Let, let me finish this a little bit. Uh, you are entitled to the full and equal accommodations, advantages, facilities, privileges, or services, and here's what the law says, just in case we didn't get it in the first part. In all business establishments of every kind whatsoever. How about that? <laughs> It doesn't get any more clear than that, does it? All business establishments of every kind whatsoever. You, you need to understand Civil Code 51 protects you. Your medical condition now is unvaccinated. It's a medical condition. 
you have the right. Your religious conviction of I do not, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I do not use it for pharmakia, which is also in the Bible. Sorcery. You need, and it's in the last days. You, you need to flee from evil. You're supposed to expose it, which is what I'm doing, and then flee from it, which is why this is so beautiful to be, I call you guys life-minded people because we're focused on life. I just love that. Give yourselves a hand. I've got two more, I've, I've got two more laws I want to share with you, and then I'll, I'll give you the one that will knock your socks off. Okay, so we talked about government code 12926Q. This defines your religious beliefs to include everything, your practice and your clothing, including face coverings. So my religious practice says no face coverings. I'm a Christian. I'm not a Muslim. And I have never worn it. I'm never going to. It's certainly not under duress or coercion. Um, I will give you the funny story. A couple of years ago, uh, we cleaned out the attic. I guess it's due for another cleaning. And uh, I'm walking up the steps. My husband said, hey, sweetie, put on this dust mask because it's really dusty up there. You know the little blue and white surgical mask? that uh, probably has all these harms to it. So this is years ago. So I put on this little blue and white mask and I'm climbing up the steps. And by the, in the 10, five seconds or whatever, by the time I climbed it to the top of the stairs and got in the attic, I pulled that thing off. It was so suffocating and claustrophobic and I couldn't breathe. That was the only time I ever wore a mask. How many of you remember the old days going to the, doc the doctor? You never wore a mask. The doctor never wore a mask, right? All this hogwash that they're sloshing all over us to try to think that's the way to do it. Two more laws for you that are very important. Please snap a photo of this. It'll be over on that table. California Health and Safety Code 24171. Now, this is very important. It confirms your right, the right, here's the law, confirms the right of the individual to determine what is done with their own bodies. You got it? That's it, it's in the law. And we want to hold these people to the law. It is 2471, sorry, 24171. 24171, going once, going twice. That's like what they're doing with this vaccine, man. They're like in the end game. They are, I feel like they're a, a, a announcer, you know, at a, um, It's like they're on a deadline or something, and they really, I think people complying with the masks, they're like, bring in the vaccines, they're ready for it. We thought we were going to have to wait a year before we enforced it, but they're ready. Look at all this compliance. Now, if you're working at a job and you're like, Peggy, I'm a, I'm a husband, I've got two little kids at home, I work in a warehouse, they aren't honoring my exemption, I have to wear this dang mask, what, should I quit my job? I'm like, not until you have another one. So you decide what's right for you. We are fighting for you. But I will never understand somebody to put on a mask to go on vacation, or to put on a mask to go to a theme park, or to put on a mask to go to the movie theater. Like, I don't, my respect ends there. <laughs> yes, I think that's, that's uh, reducing a little bit. Our uh, national anthem ended with that beautiful, our, how about another round of applause for our amazing talented singer. So you know those lyrics say the land of the free, the home of the brave, I think they need to be reversed. We need to be brave in order to defend this freedom. The freedom is not given. You know that old saying, freedom is not free. Oh yeah, I have it on a little plaque in my kitchen. It just, you know, no, 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 it's real. And the bravery comes first. And we were talking about this on the, on the podcast, on the live stream uh, with Alondra and Johnny, which you guys can go back and watch. Courage is the result of your action. You don't wait to feel courageous to stand up. You take the action first, and then you have the result of the courage and the confidence. I so I, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. Let me give the final, the final law here. Health and Safety Code 24172. So we have 24171, 24172. I know I'm just one of those law, I just am like a nerd. And I will tell you the Holy Spirit delivered these to me because I'll be researching something completely different. And that's how I came across that government code about the face covering. 
I was looking in a completely different area of law, and I'm like, what? Do you know it's like under the vehicle code? <laughs> California vehicle code is a type of code. There's all these different codes of law. In fact, there's a business and professions code, and that business and professions code in California says, again, it's illegal for you to discriminate against someone. And uh, anybody that's working at home, that has your company have you working at home, you, you have the right to seek expenses from your boss for this entire last year and a half that you've been at home. They have to pay for your computer, they have to pay for part of your utilities, they have to pay for your internet, they have to pay for the chair that you sit in. And even if they don't want to do it, they have to. So that is another California code, business and professions code, they're required to pay for your expenses. When they told me to work at home from the uh, college, I'm like, well, so you want me to sit in my house have the students see my private home using my computer, my internet, my electricity, my portion of the home for you? That also rubbed me the wrong way. So that led me to do the digging and I found out that they had to pay for those expenses. So friends, the law actually is on our side and they can't stand it when we know the law. They want you to be ignorant, eating the donuts, watching CNN. Here's the law. This an individual, this is California law. An individual has the right to refuse consent to a medical experiment without duress or coercion. Are you with me? There's a federal law called, yes, that's right, California, there's a federal law, Title VII of the U.S. Civil Rights Act. It's a federal law, so it, it applies to every state. No one has the authority to violate it. No medical center. I have to circle back around. I don't want to use that word, circle back. I'll bring back the conversation to uh, the uh, these fake emergencies in a minute. That probably just stopped my Facebook feed right there. Um, I know. Uh, no one has the authority to violate your rights or these laws. And Title VII says that you have the right to be free from discrimination at a workplace. Now, if you're a customer going in here, you're covered because they cannot harass you. You cannot harass them. Any business owners that are getting harassing emails on Yelp or whatever, that is a violation of Title VII. So if you're like, oh gosh, Peggy, I really didn't want to do the mask, but everybody's you know, giving me all this hate online and everything, you just put a little sign in your window and on your website that they'll get a service charge every time they harass you. And you can share, choose the amount. I don't know, $1,000, $10,000, what sounds good? $100,000 service charge you know, for harassing you. It's illegal. So here's what happens. You go to your boss and you say, I want to get a religious exemption. And they say, well, you need to fill out this paperwork. And I gave you the first tip, number one, is don't say anything about the science. I never did finish my first story about my medical exemption. They wanted all this paperwork. They wanted me to go to the eye doctor. That's like $650, just go to the eye doctor. And they wanted all of this information, personal information. When did this happen? How long is it gonna last? What are the things you can do, you can't do? What are your restrictions? When were the restrictions be lifted? It was several pages that I had to go to my doctor and have him fill out. And of course, I'm the one with the sensitive vision, not him. How would he know what, how my eye re reacts to light and everything? He wouldn't. So I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna go through all of this. I'll just figure it out on my own. And I figured it out on my own because one of my sayings is there's always another way and I'm gonna find it. How about that one, you guys? Yeah, let's, let's try that again. There's always another way and I'm gonna find it and you can find it, and I did find it. And all I did was turn off one of the things of lights and I didn't have to change the classroom at all. But I knew what it required to get a medical exemption. And they wanted that medical exemption to be um, redone every six months or so in case my medical situation changed. And they may question it and say, well, you're not really that sick. You probably can do this. A religious exemption is pretty bulletproof because it's all encompassing. So the, the second point I made is that you have to use your religious exemption or your um, ethical or moral sincerely held belief and it has to be an all-encompassing way that it defines your, your life. So yeah, you can't say that 
this musician is my god and I like to go to his concerts. That's not like really informing how you look. Maybe it is, but she didn't get it. The other thing, this is the most important. I said they're all the most important, but this is also the most important. Everything has to be done in writing. Many, many people got tripped up because their boss said, we'd like to have a meeting with you and the HR will, um, at 10 o'clock on Thursday. And then you're like, oh, okay, I've got my thing, I've got my paperwork. And you go in and they start bombarding you with questions that you're not ready to answer. And before you know it, you start saying things that you wish you hadn't said and you start talking about this is all a bunch of hogwash and nobody's dying and they're doing that on purpose. You know the saying, anything you say can be used against you. So the remedy is you say, love to have the meeting. Please submit all of your questions and concerns in writing, and I will reply in writing as well. And then when you go to the meeting and they tell you everything, you shake your head and you say, mm-hmm, I see, yes, okay, mm-hmm, all right, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they ask you and you say, oh, no comment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, what do you think about, mm-hmm, no comment. And you go on and on and on, and you reply in writing, and you email us so that we can help you so you don't get tripped up. We have nearly 100% success rate. I say nearly because some of the people didn't follow these rules. The other most important thing to do before you do any of this is you, in writing, you write to them and you say, "Um, I would like to request a religious exemption. Are you guys ready? Would you tell me under what grounds it might not be accepted? Are you with me? You're asking them in advance. And then they're going to say, well, you just just um, submit it and we'll look at it then. Like, oh, great, I will submit it. Would you let me know what standard you're using to evaluate it? You see, somehow I have an answer for everything. Don't you hate those people? <laughs> you're such a know-it-all. And I said to my sister, I don't want, I don't want to be like a know-it-all. She said, well, you're just a know-a-lot. <laughs> I like that one. But the thing is, it's out there for everybody to know. And I want you to know it. I want you guys all to be know-it-alls. How about that, huh? Does that sound good? <laughs> you want to be know I want you to be know-it-alls also. also. So I'm ready to give you that, that little kick in the pants where it's like, this one is just going to drop your jaw. Anyway, it did for me. So what they're going to say to you is this. I already know what they're going to say. They're going to say, well, if you don't get the needle, you have to be tested every week. Like, oh, you mean with that test that doesn't me- that measures a virus that doesn't exist? With the test that doesn't work, that's what you want me to do? Is the feed still going? Probably just got cut. You can't say that. But what you um, can say is, oh, why do I need to be tested? Why do you want me to wear a mask? You see, you come up with questions. And then here's their answer, because the health and safety of our company comes first. Have you guys been in those places and they're like, you're going to Verizon and like, well, the health and safety of our employees comes first. Like, well, how about the cell reception? Shouldn't that come first, right? I mean, it's so ridiculous. They don't have, it's called a standard of care. It's another legal term. They don't have a standard of care to be your doctor. You know, this is old news to many of you. They're, They're not a doctor. They can't give you medical advice, blah, blah, blah. We all know that. But here's the beautiful thing. They are going to say, but you're a threat to others. And you say, oh, do you have the court order establishing that fact? Only a court can order you to do anything. Only a court can order you to go to jail. Only a court can order you to go to court. It's called a subpoena. Only a court can order you to go to rehab. Only a court can order the custody to be one parent or another. Only a court can order someone to stay away. It's called a restraining order. That's a court order. Only a court can order someone to quarantine or to be established as a direct threat. And you know how that court orders it? Remember that word, evidence. There has to be evidence. And that evidence comes from the sworn testimony of a licensed medical doctor, not the checkout clerk at Trader Joe's. (laughs) (laughs) Or your HR, or your supervisor. So a doctor would have to examine you and then determine that you're carrying this infectious disease that's killed most people I know. There you go. So a doctor would have to examine you and under sworn testimony, under penalty of perjury, that doctor could go to prison if he lied 
and said that you're carrying this illness, which they can't test for because they've never isolated the, the V, I can't even say it, the illness. So if that happened to you, you could get an appeal and you go to a different doctor and you go to a different court. So you ask your employer, oh, do you, if you produce the court order requiring me to wear the scan and to get this thing inserted in my nose, um, I may consider it. But until that time, you have no authority to call me a direct threat. That would be like saying, everybody right now, you guys are all car thieves, I know it, because you're in a parking lot and there's cars. <laughs> Round them up, get them, go on. There's cars and they're standing next to them. Friends, that is where we're heading. Saying that you're sick when you're healthy, I despise that. It actually is stomach turning. I should have given you a vomit warning. To, t to say that you are sick when you're healthy, to implant this in little children's brains, that, the, that, that people in authority are telling them to suffocate themselves, when they themselves know that's not the right thing to do, the harm there is that they're not gonna trust their own wisdom and intelligence. Maybe it's not wisdom at that age, but intelligence and knowing. So you say to your boss, um, please provide the evidence that I'm a direct threat. That would be like saying um, every 16 year old is a shoplifter. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Every person over 60 can't hear. What, what was that? <laughs> Those are stereotypes and generalizations and they are stomach turning, aren't they? Nobody wants to have that. Stere stereotype about you? A generalization? It's in the law. It's a federal law, and I have all of these on the website under documents. It's the most important page to go to, documents. The, put in the the, healthyamerican.org. Read all those documents. Number five is the one I'm talking about right now. All of these laws, federal laws that protect you from being able to, you can go to a store without having to prove anything. So let me give you the kicker. Let's, let's turn the tables on, on your employer, all right, and these colleges and stuff. I'm not talking K-12. K-12, there are no exemptions. The only exemption is take them home. That's the best exemption. You don't have to fight any of this. The mask is the least harmful thing in the schools. They're, they're gonna vaccinate your child 12 and older and you don't even know about it. They can take them for an abortion at the same time and there's no parental consent because when you send them to school, you are giving the consent of your, of your parental consent to the school. I hope you know that. So I wouldn't do it. I would never do it. And I have remedies for you. You don't have to worry about anything. Keep them home now and I'll help you to do, figure out what to do on Monday. Promise me you'll do that. Almost 200,000, probably more than that, um, students are not going to back to school in California, and that will hurt them in the pocketbook. What we need is we need the teachers to leave the school and start setting up school in their living room, in their garage. Go to the beach, old school on the beach. Find your uh, community centers, you know? and have an area where you can get your neighborhood kids together and we will show you exactly how to do that. That is a remedy. That is something going forward that's gonna change the trajectory of our country. All right, here's that, that little kicker that I was gonna tell you about. Let's play along with them, shall we, a little bit and say, yeah, you know what? I found out, I, I got the test and it turns out I, I have it and I have, I have the long COVID. Have you guys heard of that? The long, they, 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 you know, they throw these things out like Delta, and then there's like Delta Plus. And, and they said Delta's contagious. I kid you not, they said Delta Plus is super contagious. I love that scientific wording that you're using. And now they're coming with Lambda. And my, my husband I saw this cool meme. It says, I already know the Alpha and Omega. I don't need to know the Delta and the Lambda. For those of you who don't know the Alpha and Omega, the author and finisher of my faith. Your creator, by the way. Whether you know that or not, you were created by God, and if you don't know him, he knows you. And that's the beautiful end. You see, the enemy does not want that getting out there. So let's play around, let's play along with him a little bit and say, you know what, I, I've got this long haul COVID. It turns out I'm gonna have it for life. Um, but I found a law, uh, Mr. HR and Supervisor, I found this law and it's called Title VII of the U.S. Civil Rights Act. And it says that you cannot discriminate against me based on my medical condition. And my medical condition is I have COVID. 
like to slam them. They cannot get out of it. Should I do a mic drop on that one? They can't get out of it. That, that's why I say they've painted themselves into a corner. And that's why they're pushing so hard as our wonderful um, auctioneer there. They are trying, they know that we're waking up and they, they know that people are not gonna be going for this hogwash. So if you wanna go along and say, yeah, it turns out I am sick and you still have to allow me to come to work because now it's a medical disability. And if you do get fired, and that's the other tip, my other first most important tip, don't ever resign. Make them fire you and then you'll have a discrimination lawsuit. That bank I told you about that I went in and it said, you have to take off your sunglasses and all that. I did a little research last year when I was looking for attorneys. I couldn't find any attorneys, but I did see a case for that very bank, my branch in Laguna Niguel. Two women got fired and they both did an unlawful termination lawsuit and they both walked away with millions of dollars. Their, their claim was that it, they were they were fired because of their age and their ethnicity because they both originally had came from different countries um, and they were can you believe over 40 is considered age discrimination so I think you guys even if you're like oh I'm just still 39 um, that's age discrimination so I think it would be so funny because I, I like to be lighthearted to start to bring in all of these other uh, points of discrimination that they're making. All you females can do it on gender, right? Or, or, or any gender, all the, well, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Males cannot do it, unfortunately. But there are so many, you know, by the law, they're called protected, protected classes. So I would bring that out. I'd say, you're discriminating against me because I'm a woman and I'm over 40. And if you came from another country, you can say, and I, because of my ethnicity because of my race, because of my, um, all that stuff. You probably could. That is not under Title VII, actually. That's under California law, but not Title VII. So we need to be one step ahead of them, and we're several steps ahead of them. They actually didn't bank on people learning the law and knowing it and applying it, and they're scurrying. So what your boss is going to do, number one, is they're going to delay. And they're gonna say, we're gonna take this under consideration and while we do, we're gonna put you on an unpaid leave of absence. I know this because I'm working with many, many people. And that is illegal. That's another part of the law, Title VII. You guys all know this now, right? Title VII of the US Civil Rights Act, study it. It says that if you seek an exemption and they retaliate against you, that's another violation of the law. So by putting you on unpaid leave is certainly treating you differently than everybody else. I would say, well, you can put me on a paid leave while you figure it out. Is it that hard? The law is clear. But what they're doing is they're delaying because they don't want to have the dominoes fall. They don't want one person to get the exemption. And before you know it, everybody in the company is getting the exemption. And the reason why is because of money. They are getting millions and millions, billions of dollars are being flooded into this estate. 112 billion with a B for California schools, public and private. So when I say get your kids out of school, I'm talking about private schools, unless they're following the freedom learning method. Kids don't learn sitting at a desk and learning one subject one hour at a time. That's not how people learn. So they all also are getting money and they're gonna hassle you. All of these um, sports coaches and all that, they're all getting money. Mm. And you gotta call them on that. Yeah. I would not recommend that you resign because then you can't get unemployment and you can't do this case like the people at the bank did. You have to have them fire you. And so you just keep showing up at work. And then they'll probably call the cops and say you're trespassing. And now that's unlawful. Um, there's another word that slips in my mind, but now they are at an unlawful arrest because you're not trespassing. But it shouldn't have to get to that point. You're gonna educate them with the materials that we have available for you. We just started doing a brand new program where we're doing a, a weekly consulting call. We are asking for those of you that wanna invest in it because we want to invest in a freedom learning center. Let me give you my vision for the future. Right? It might even be down here somewhere, North San Diego. North, North San Diego is up where I'm thinking. So imagine a place where you have these kids coming for their freedom learning 
and they're running around in the organic garden. They're actually planting the seeds. They're learning about the soil. They're learning about chemistry. They're learning about botany. Then later there's a, um, an organic chef that's going to be helping. The kids are going to learn how to prepare food. They're going to learn about the nutritional value. They're going to learn about hospitality. They're going to be learning about mathematics with all of the cooking. There's going to be an area there for all the trades where kids are going to learn how to fix a car, how to sew, how to make something, how to build something, right? Something that's actually helpful. It's going to include technology and all of those things. At this school, there's going to be all of the recreation. There will be a special focus on teens because they can often be more vulnerable as they're separating from their parents and being at the hands of the evil doers. There will be swimming pools and tennis courts, and there will be an animal shelter where the kids will learn how to take care of these animals and understand that you don't tie them up in the backyard and throw them out on the street. And, 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 and yes, Alondra said, done, you don't eat them. And there will also be a center for the seniors, the senior center, and then they'll be able to help the kids with the schooling and the kids are gonna be reading to the seniors. Are you with me on this vision, you guys? Because you know what, I've really had it with going to these board meetings. We are taking legal action against them. I'll talk about that in just one moment. But what I want to tell you is this. There is another way. There's a better way, and it could be better than ever. I've had healthy Americans tell me, Peggy, I say thank God for COVID. I'm like, what? And she said, yeah, I've made so many new friends. I have a purpose in my life. I'm so much smarter because I know what my rights are. I know how to stand up for them. So we need to focus on the positive, everybody. This could turn out to be the biggest blessing in disguise. God, yes. God put you here in this time of life. Did anybody have that inkling kind of growing up or like, I think my life is kind of special. Did you think that? Like, I bet I'm going to do something important with my life. Let's have a round of applause for those of you who thought that, right? You're like, you know what? My life matters. And I'm going to have an impact on this world. Well, guess what? It's time for you to step on stage because that is your time now. And I will tell you that it is important to fight. I have gone to those school board meetings. I've gone to many of them. I write the documents to help educate people to fight at the school board meetings. I've had them tell me, we're just not gonna do it. We aren't gonna do it. We're, we're taking our marching orders from the governor and we're not gonna do anything until he changes. They all are in violation of the law. So yes, protect your family. Go out and fight a little bit, but protect your family. That's also biblical. You have to, you have to take care of your own household before you can take care of others. We're going to take some Q and A in just a, in just a moment. I think you. I think I got that. Thanks. Yes, she was my reminder. And uh, it is important to go to those board meetings. We have educated them. And when you go to those board meetings, it's a perfect opportunity to meet others. How many of you have met people at some of these? I want you to raise your hand right now if you want to meet somebody. Look around. Raise your hand if you're willing to exchange your text message or something. Raise your hand if you're like, hey, I'll be somebody. Here's my friend Melissa. She's running a group. We've got. Uh, Reopen San Diego. Oh, right now I want to tell you about Anna. Anna, raise your hand. Anna is also doing some event on um, uh, August 25th in Vista. So she's in the yellow. Go find her later. And uh, we want to connect with people locally. So going to these board meetings is a good way of meeting people. But I am at the point where it's the talk is over. And I'm not talking about fighting, but now we're going to fight in the courtroom. So it has dawned on me that many attorneys do not want to take these fights. Many people email me and say, Peggy, can you recommend an attorney? And my first question is, why? Why do you want an attorney when you can do it yourself? We give you every remedy. So we're doing these consulting classes weekly. I hope that you'll join in. You have a chance to actually interact with us. And we're talking about the exemptions. That's the main thing. But if you have an issue with getting in for medical care or travel or something like that, please bring your questions. Everything is at thehealthyamerican.org. Now, what I want to say is about this Freedom Learning Center is we've got, we've got to move forward. We've got to kind of separate from these evildoers. We will be fighting in court, but at the same time, we need to build. Now, these attorneys, not, not the one you saw, but many attorneys either are ignorant of the law and they actually don't know how to fight it. So that example I gave in Texas, they argued the wrong point. Those people never sought their exemptions. Those exemptions were not refused, they weren't even, they weren't even submitted. So the, the argument that they brought in that case was that they didn't have the right to fire us. Well, in Texas, they have the right to fire you. It was argued on the wrong point. 
But the headlines came out as a scare tactic, so everybody else would say, well, you just have to get it, because you know, Texas, they said, they, had, they said the mandates are legal. No, they're not. They're not. They can't require you to have a hysterectomy. They can't require you to, um, what's next? You're gonna have your tuberculosis screening every week? At least that's for a disease that exists. And it's actually contagious. That kind of makes sense. But it doesn't because it's your body. So I want to tell you the other reason attorneys don't want to take this. They're licensed by the state. Just like doctors don't want to write a medical exemption because they're licensed by the state. They don't want to be on the radar. For a religious exemption, you don't worry, you, the pastors are not licensed by the state. <laughs> Pastor David is ordained by God, by the Holy Spirit, but um, you don't need anything like that from the state. So there's no, and, and we're, like I say, we're marching this all the way, all the way to heaven. We, yeah, so I've got, we're gonna wrap up here in a couple more minutes. The other reason attorneys don't wanna take the cases is this one is also gonna knock your socks off. I called the leading civil rights agency, uh, law, uh, law firm in Santa Barbara, very well known. They handle constitutional law, civil rights. Last year, a friend of mine who actually knows these attorneys said, I can get you a call, Peggy, for free. I'm like, awesome. So we get on this call, talk about all this stuff. He's like, yeah, you're right. It's exactly illegal. Governor has no authority because there's no evidence for it. The local health officers have no authority because there's no evidence for it. But we can't take your case. I said, why? Because we are on retainer by the governor. It's called hush money. It's called protection money. So the attorney, an attorney that I know and like in Orange County cannot take the case against the Orange County Board of Supervisors because his, he's a partner in, or I don't know if he's a partner, but the law firm he works for is on retainer from the County of Orange. I said, do you have any active cases? Oh no, no, they haven't given us any work. Are you, are you, are you putting the pieces together? You guys are smart, you're putting the pieces together. So these law firms are being paid by the government to not work, kind of like the farmers are being paid not to grow anything. I have insider knowledge that these, from truck drivers, that they are not getting their loads. That's when they get, that's how they get paid, is they get a load to carry. And they said, you better stop stopping, stocking up on the food because we don't have it. So I do have a prepping event on, online as well. That's really fun to watch. So the last reason attorneys don't want to take these cases is because they want, they want somebody else to do it first. And they're waiting for all of the COVID cases when they can really rake in the big bucks. You, have you heard seen those ads? Do you have mesothelioma? <laughs> Call us now. So a couple of years from now, all these attorneys are gonna come take the vaccine cases and the COVID cases when they're really gonna make some money. They're not gonna make any money off me because I'm doing a lawsuit that doesn't have any damages. So I do have a lawsuit against the Orange County Board of Supervisors. We are taking it. I want you to do it in, I want you to do it in San Diego. I want you to do it in San Diego. I want you to do it in Los Angeles, the Inland Empire. I want you to do it in every single county. We are fine tuning it. We hope to serve them on Tuesday. We are using all of these laws that we've uncovered here and it is to force them to end this phony, fake, fraudulent, local health emergency. Do you know how long a health emergency can last after it's been called? Seven days. You, you got it, seven days. You've been to my events before, seven days. Yeah, when a local health officer calls an emergency, it lasts for seven days. After that, the Board of Supervisors has to approve it. Every 30 days after that, the Board of Supervisors has to vote to extend it or terminate it. The law says that they have to terminate it, this is the language of the law, at the earliest date that conditions warrant. Would you repeat that word, earliest? earliest. Not when the money runs out, not when they feel like it, not when the governor says there's no emergency. Each county is required by law, here it is you guys, California Health and Safety Code 101080, Write that one down, nice and easy to remember. Also, uh, 8630D, it's similar law. Somebody sent me a really cool, like a poster she had made that says 101080. Because that's how important that law is. We have to have force these boards to follow the law. And because they haven't been listening to us, I said, the last time I spoke, which was last week or the week before, I said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I need to apologize to all of you board members. I've been coming before you week after week, month after month, year after year, and I'm telling you the 
these laws that you're violating, and I am so sorry. I didn't realize you don't have the mental capacity to understand me. <laughs> you really are in the wrong profession. Because at this point, we really just need to laugh at them because they're laughable. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to have a judge rule on this. And the law is clear. There is no evidence. The emergency rooms are not overwhelmed. Orange County does not have anybody from San Diego working in the hospitals. They certainly have enough PPE and ABCD EFG. So they've painted themselves into a corner. So my prediction for the future, I actually believe just like our uh, Auctioneer here, going once, going twice, they're going to see as many people that they can get doing this. They're coming out with all these variants. They're trying to shut us down again. We have got to stay educated. We've got to stay connected, and we have to take action. I go to those board meetings week after week, regardless of the result, because action is what gives you dignity. You sitting on the couch and complaining about it and watching these videos, spinning, it's like junk food. I implore you to delete those. Do not stay up until two o'clock in the morning watching the military roll in and the FEMA and all that. Just don't do it. That is exactly what they want. They want you to be living in dread and fear. You've got to lift yourself up. You have got to focus on the future. Listen, evil carries its own seeds of destruction. Are you with me? Evil is going to self-destruct. And that's biblical, that you, the enemy sets the snare and falls into it himself. The only creative force is God's force. It is good, good creates. We cannot keep fighting like Alondra said, we've got to work with grace and um, educate the people, try to create allies, and more importantly, we have to create. We have to create our own communities, our own ways of doing things, and I'm so grateful for all of you here on board. I consider you all crew members at thehealthyamerican.org. Thank you, everybody.